Hey folks, uh, welcome back. Uh, in this particular video, we'll actually um, look into uh, redundancy, right? We'll look into the ASA redundancy. Uh, yeah, so as you see on the screen, there's a logical diagram. So we have the ASA at the center and, uh, you know, R1 is at the bottom and R2 is at the top. This is my inside network and this is the outside network. Um, and uh, we are interested in, um, you know, looking into how we can incorporate redundancy, right? So redundancy interface allows you to provide redundancy at the interface level, right? So uh, what we'll do in the next few minutes is we are going to uh, see how we can uh, plug in two interfaces on the, uh, on the, you know, inside, right? So this is the inside and uh, normally we used to configure one interface, but we are going to see how we can use two interfaces so, so that even if one interface fails, the other one will still be up and, you know, uh, the device is going to work smoothly, right? So this is my logical diagram. Only I'm going to use like R1, R2 and the ASA over here, right? And uh, uh, so this is what, uh, you know, I have constructed. I've constructed this uh, physical topology using one switch at the center and R1, R1, R2 and switches uh, and the ASA is over here. So how do we uh, convert a logical you know, uh, how do you convert this physical topology into this logical diagram using VLANs, right? We have done this before. Uh, so we are going to um, do this now. So we are going to have this VLAN 20 over here. VLAN 20 is going to be the interface of R2 and the ASA interface, right? The gigabit 0 slash 0. So this, these two interfaces will constitute VLAN 20. And, uh, you know, this, the fast Ethernet 0 slash 0 and uh, the inside interfaces of ASA1 will be the VLAN 10, will be inside VLAN 10, right? And uh, the rest of them, you know, we will do it as we go ahead, right? So let's uh, put this up here. So that's easier to type in the commands, right? So let's start with uh, the switch, right? Let's start doing the switch first, right? So let's start configuring the switch. Uh, let's put in, uh, uh, let's put all the interfaces into uh, full duplex and put a speed as well so that you know there won't be a mismatch of the speed so we'll do this uh, so all the interfaces of the switch have put them in full duplex right now comes the VLAN part right so the VLAN part let's do the VLAN 20 part so you see this is VLAN 20 and we need to have the interface fast Ethernet 1 slash uh, 2 and uh, you know one of the interfaces one of these three interfaces let's take 1 slash 3 so 1 slash 2 and 1 slash 3 will be in uh, VLAN 20. So okay, let's do that. There you go. Right. Once uh, we are going to put that in VLAN 20. And the rest of the three interfaces will be in VLAN 10. Right. So which are the rest of the three interfaces? Uh, it's going to be fast Ethernet 1 slash 1, fast Ethernet 1 slash 4 and 1 slash 5. Right. All these, they go down here. Great. Right. So we have done that. What do we do next? Um, so we have done uh, the configuration on the uh, switch. So let's take this and let's put it on the switch. Right. So there you go. So we have done that. And um, yeah, that's good. Now we will do the configurations on my uh, routers right we have r1 and r2 so what do we do on r1 is we are going to um, um, you know uh, we need to put an ip address for this interface 1 slash 0 we are going to put a default route towards the asa and we will also enable uh, telnet on this right so let me pull the configuration for r1 so let's put r1 here right this is going to be my configuration on r1 right the first uh, um, you know, line basically makes uh, all the all the interfaces in full duplex so that there won't be a mismatch, right? We want to have the same thing on both the sides. Uh, the next is we are going to put uh, no IP domain lookup. We are going to put in a host name, right? These are all pretty much standard configurations. Now we go to the interface Ethernet one slash zero, which is this one, and we put an IP address which is ten eleven eleven one, right? And the default route towards the ASA is going to be ten eleven eleven ten, right? And we are also going to enable telnet. So that's basically R1. Let's take this. Let's do R2 as well and then put all of them together, right? So 
R2 configuration also will remain the same. There will be only small change probably with the IP address. So let's put that. So this is my R2. On the R2 side, I have my again uh, full duplex riding on all the interfaces. And uh, this is pretty much similar to what we did. The interface is going to be 192.1.20.2, right? This interface over here because the network is 192.1.20.0. This will be 20.2. And we also have a default route, which is again towards the ASA over here. And we are enabling telnet on that. Right? So let's take this. Let's take R1 first. Let's go and put the configuration for R1. Great. Let's do the same thing. Let's go and put the configuration for R2. Looks good, R1, R2, great. Uh, so we have done that configuration, which means uh, my R1, R2 are good, and I have done my, uh, uh, you know, VLAN related configuration on switch one, so that, you know, it basically resembles this topology. Now, what do we do next? Uh, let's go and play around with the ASA, right? So ASA, if you look at the ASA over here, I think this is better. So if you look at the ASA, we have an outgoing interface, uh, gigabit 0 and then we have two interfaces on the inside which is um, gigabit 1 and 2 right so these two interfaces over here so let's configure the uh, you know outgoing interface to start with right so the outgoing interface uh, you know how we configure right we put a name if and we put a security level right so this is going to be my outgoing interface gigabit 0 name if is outside we put an IP address on it and we put a no shout Great. And uh, the next part, what do we do next? Uh, let's also put a route, uh, the default route, right, saying that, you know, you'll have to, this is how you go outside the ASA, right? So this is um, the default route to 192.1.20.2, which is my R2, right? So that's a default route. Now, uh, we know that, um, you know, out of these three interfaces, one is the outgoing interface and the rest of the two are you know the inside interfaces which we plan to work our redundancy on so let's um, now enable both of my inside interfaces one is gigabit one and gigabit two right uh, let's do that sorry okay so that's going to be gigabit one and two uh, i mean though it might appear here to be ethernet interface but it's actually a gigabit interface right so gigabit interface one and two no shut so we have done that as well. Now let's uh, do the most important configuration where uh, you know we, we are going to do something called as a redundant configuration. So we do interface uh, redundant. We give a number to it, redundant one, right? Then you do member interface, right? We are going to tell that we are going to list out the interfaces which are going to be part of this redundant interface. So member interface um, gigabit one. And we also have member interface, right? And that's going to be gigabit two, right? And we have name if and inside, okay? And IP address, right? So we have IP address, and we need to put in a IP address uh, uh, for the redundant interface, and that's going to be ten eleven eleven ten. Right, I think that's good. 10, 11, 11, 10, 255, 255, 255, 0. So that's going to be the interface IP. And we'll also put in a MAC address. We have a provision to put a MAC address as well. Right. So once we are done with this, we are actually good. Right. We have the written interface up. Right. So, um, so I think this should be good. Actually, let's also do a little bit of natting here because, uh, you know, if. Um, um, you know, uh, natting is just to try, right? We let's try if we can nat uh, uh, my 10.11.11.0 network, right? So that you know it gets um, uh, translated, right? And we can actually test it as well. So yeah, how do you do nat? Right, so basically, you know why we do nat, right? We have covered nat before. Nat is because mainly because this is a private IP address. Right, and um, um, you, know, you know, this is obviously not visible in the public 
network or public internet and that's why we do a NAT so that you know uh, it get translated to an address um, you know which is which is a public address right great so how do we do the NAT NAT is pretty much what we have done in the last video so it's going to be pretty simple we define a object network we define the subnet which we want to NAT and then we see the inside outside and the dynamic interface right is basically um, you know which provides the public IP address so that looks good let's pick this up and put it on the ASA right we have done this now what do we do next so now we have to test it is it actually working right so let's uh, go to my ASA first let's see uh, the ASA if it is able to reach to my you know R1 so it's going to be 10.11.11.1 11 11 right good that works um, let's also see the redundant interfaces show interface redundant and one looks good right so the interface which we created just now is all fine running let's clear this a bit what do we do next um, right so now let's go to my R1 and let's see if we can uh, uh, if, if whatever we have done is right right if it has worked um, you know R1 should be able to tell it into R2 right because if whatever we have configured on the inside and outside right um, is working then that should work so we will do telnet 192.1.20.2 right that's the IP address of the R2 there you go that worked and we are inside R2 now right so that's good so which means my redundant interface actually worked okay actually I will show you once again if I go inside this and if I go to my AC and do show x late I think you'll be able to see that yeah so there were two sessions because I opened it twice right so you can see that it works um, yeah so this is good let me exit this and uh, what else what else we'll see so this worked right what we were able to achieve was we actually introduced uh, redundant interfaces so if you look at the redundant interface over here um, show interface redundant one you can see that uh, you know one of the interface will always be active in this case gigabit one whereas the other one will be like the standby so if something happens to my gigabit one only then the switchover will happen right so um, so we so we were basically able to test this theory right now what do we do next 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 um, now the problem with redundant interface is uh, it's uh, although it provides redundancy it does not provide load balancing right so which means one interface will always be active whereas the other one will be uh, idle so how do we solve this using port channels right makes sense so for doing that let's first go and remove the redundant interface which we created right uh, so that it doesn't cause issues later right so let's go and remove it great uh, that looks good so we have removed this we removed the redundant interface we can actually test it because if I do a telnet now it won't work because I removed the redundant interface right so this again clearly says that redundant interfaces were working and that's why telnet was working from R1 to R2 now we have removed it so how do we do next so we need to create port channels right so we're going to create port channels between so if I show you this we're going to create a port channel here on both the sides obviously on um, on the ASA but since you know the on the physical side the ASA is actually connected to the switch so we need to create it on both the sides on the switch as well as on ASA so let's do it on the ASA first right so we need to um, do this right so let's um, do this so on the ASA side we're gonna take both our interfaces which is gigabit 1 and uh, gigabit 2 and we're gonna put it as channel group 1 these two numbers should match and the mode right what mode we are gonna use we're gonna use the mode as on uh, and uh, no shut right put a no shut on that so you do this and then we define the port channel right so what is going to be the port channel the port channel will basically be this piece right so this is going to be interface port channel 1 we are going to call this as name if inside security level 100 and we are going to put an IP address as well 
because you know uh, IP address is just like how we had put the IP address on my editor interface we're gonna put the similar IP address over here so I think this should be good let's pick this up and let's um, you know do the configs right on my ASA right that's good um, yeah so let's see if uh, you know this how does this configuration look show interface port channel 1 right so you can see uh, the port channel is up and the two interfaces which are part of port channel are gigabit 1 and 2 now as I told we have to because it is connected to switch on the other side we need to do port channeling on the other side as well which is the switch let's clear this so what do we do on the switch side is interesting on the switch side we will again uh, you know uh, do the configuration let's go top so here right so what will be the switch side so we are going to do uh, let's do uh, this piece first what this does is uh, we are basically clearing all, all the configuration on the interfaces 4 and 5 because you know that is basically here right 4 and 5 right so we cleared default interface range f1 slash 1 slash 5 interface range uh, um, you know we are going to do the four channel configuration now so 1 slash 4 and 5 channel group 5 mode active right so we're gonna we can use any number over here but it uh, has to be the same uh, uh, you know uh, later on so we we're gonna use 5 now and uh, let's probably not use the active mode we are going to use the on mode because we used on the on on the other side as well which is the ASA so once that is done what we'll do is uh, let's go and go to the interface for channel 5 switch board mode access and uh, uh, let's also put the access because it is the inside of the ASA which is which was earlier in VLAN 10 right so this was earlier in VLAN 10 so we're gonna put back put it back in VLAN 10 okay right looks good yeah so let's pick this up and put this in on the switch okay looks good yes I think that's look that does look good right so let's so we have already checked the port channel on the ASA side right show interface port channel it was up let's see over here as well if it looks good so it's going to be show um, if I'm not wrong it's going to be show ether channel so ether channel summary right it's a command yeah so you have the port channel up here as well great so now we, let's test it let's go back to my testing device which is r1 on the inside let's see if we can ping uh, my asa first just 10.11.10 dot 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 yeah that works now if i have to do a telnet right telnet to r2 just like we did earlier in the redundant interface scenario 192.1.20.2 right that is where it works so i'm getting the shell and i've got r2 you know telneted into right so yeah that's what we did in this whole uh, you know session we actually looked at how we can introduce redundancy at the interface level we did uh, using two methods one is redundant interface and the other one is port channels right and it looks pretty good right guys uh, yeah thanks for watching and uh, uh, meet you next time with uh, another session on asa thank you bye